It's The Real News. I'm Ben Norton. Lebanon has held its first parliamentary election in nine years. And the Shia nationalist party Hezbollah and its political allies have made historic gains. On the other hand, Lebanon's Western-backed Prime Minister Saad Hariri, who is allied with Saudi Arabia, and his party, the Future Movement, lost several seats in parliament. Michel Own, the Maronite Christian president of Lebanon, and his party, the Free Patriotic Movement, gained seats. And at the same time, the right-wing, Israel-backed Christian party, the Lebanese forces, made a big gain, doubling its seats. Joining us today to analyze the results of the election in Lebanon is Jamal Gossen. Jamal is a writer and political commentator and the former managing editor of Al-Akbar English. Thanks for joining us, Jamal. Thank you, Ben. So can you just react to this election? I mean, this is a historic parliamentary election, the first in nine years, and Hezbollah and its allies made very significant gains while Hariri lost seats. What do you think the significance of this, of this is? Well, uh, first of all, I want to point out one thing uh, uh, about one of the parties that made the big gain today. Uh, you called them the Israeli-backed Lebanese forces, and uh, this is inaccurate. Uh, they may have been allies uh, uh, with Israel at some point uh, when Israel occupied Lebanon and when they invaded in the 80s, but uh, this uh, is no longer the case. Uh, uh, they, the Lebanese for, uh, forces repented, <laughs> and uh, they have now. Uh, I mean, they are a uh, Lebanese party that uh, they have some uh, suspect regional alliances, like uh, many, like uh, their former allies in the Future Movement. Uh, they have some backing from Saudi Arabia and the U.S., but uh, there is no relationship with, uh, with Israel at this time, at least not uh, an open one. Well, thank you for that uh, correction. Yes. Yeah, that, that's, that's an important correction. Historically, they were allied with Israel, but not anymore. Uh, yes, and they did make uh, significant gains uh, today uh, in uh, today's results, yesterday's election. Uh, and mainly it is because of the election law that uh, uh, was uh, for the first time uh, used for the first time in Lebanon, which uh, basically allowed uh, smaller parties to take more control of uh, of the vote and uh, it's uh, it's more a proportional uh, representation and uh, this benefited uh, them as well as other uh, christian parties which uh, over the past uh, 30 years uh, have uh, had their uh, votes kind of uh, overshadowed uh, by uh, their the other parties who uh, Muslim parties who had uh, more of a control over the electoral districts and uh, whatnot, uh, because uh, but even with that, uh, there um, the this election law has many flaws, including the way uh, the districts are gerrymandered. Uh, there's uh, there are many areas in Le uh, if you look at um, the rich Beirut district of uh, what's called Beirut one, uh, it. Uh, 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 a vote of, or if you get uh, 6,000 votes, you would get into parliament, while in some of the poorer areas uh, in the periphery in Lebanon, you would need up to 20,000 votes to uh, break in. So a vote, a rich uh, uh, vote, a rich Christian vote in Beirut is worth as much as three or four uh, votes uh, of other uh, uh, citizens in other parts of the country. Uh, this is a major flaw. This uh, does uh, kind of uh, question the legitimacy of the vote, but all the political, major political powers in Lebanon agreed on this, and they turned a blind eye to that, uh, and, uh, and this is what we have today. So this is uh, a vote. For the first time, it's proportional. It has allowed for uh, some of the uh, parties and uh, individuals who did not have the ability to compete with the big parties to have, uh, to score some gains and win some seats in parliament and um, uh, it'll be interesting to see how uh, uh, the next parliament uh, uh, performs in light of uh, a much more diverse uh, pool of uh, MPs. And we see that the future movement and Hariri, who is allied with Saudi Arabia, we actually saw several months ago, he was forced to resign on air in Saudi Arabia, but has since returned to power in Lebanon. We saw that his party lost seats and Hezbollah and its allies, Amo and others, have gained seats. Um, can you respond to this development and what do you think 
uh, the effect will be in Lebanese politics? Well, uh, he was expected to lose seats no matter what because uh, his uh, former bloc was inflated because of what I mentioned earlier of uh, the election law that was tailor-made for Hariri back, uh, in, uh, back in the days when they wanted. Uh, it even goes back to the uh, days of his father when they tailor-made the election law to create as, much, as big a, a bloc as possible uh, for him. Uh, but yes, so but by... Uh, implementing a more fair law, it automatically was going to reduce uh, the size of the Hariri bloc. What's surprising is that even uh, with this expected loss, I think uh, they, the turnout uh, in his uh, strongholds was uh, lower than expected. And he lost uh, more seats than he would have liked to. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, I mean, there are many factors for that. Uh, you mentioned um, the relationship that's no longer in its prime with Saudi Arabia I and mean, he was kidnapped and uh, some reports say tortured by uh, the Saudi crown prince uh, and uh, this is uh, they tried to mend the, this relationship because they have a mutual interest they didn't want to lose their men in, in Lebanon after uh, their failed coup attempt against uh, Hariri but uh, it never it was never I mean, it was never going to reach that level that they had before. And at the same time, uh, the Harir movement in general has weakened, and not to mention his uh, uh, bad financial situation that uh, has reflected badly because he's um, lost a lot of uh, uh, loyalists uh, who used to work in his uh, companies, uh, whether in Saudi Arabia or in Lebanon, and he has uh, been... he has. Uh, fired many and not paid the dues of many of those, these workers. So that has generated a, a lot of anger in his stronghold, especially in the city of Saida, where he's from. And uh, this, uh, uh, you could see that in, in the election results. Yeah, and then what do you think of uh, you, Hezbollah and its allies gain significant numbers of seats? Uh, what, what will the influence of that be in Lebanese politics? I mean, it will not change much in terms of uh, the politics because uh, they always kind of had a veto power. Uh, now they have officially the ability to veto or not to, uh, to uh, uh, basically in, in parliament because uh, Hezbollah and, his, and their allies uh, uh, have uh, now over a third of uh, the seats. Uh, they're direct allies. They have other allies that uh, like the FPM, which uh, uh, would put them well over half uh, the seats of parliament, but uh, right now they have an official veto power, even though in Lebanese confessional system, if uh, if one of the major sects in Lebanon, here we're talking about the Sunnis, Shia, or the Christians, uh, decide to oppose something, it is uh, uh, mainly, uh, I mean, it is considered a veto power, even though if it's not officially a veto power. So now it's official in terms of, of uh, constitutional votes, but they always had that. So this is not going to change uh, anything. The only thing is uh, it changes, um, I mean, there was a the rhetoric uh, coming into the elections, uh, especially since this is the first election in nine years, is that uh, Hezbollah involvement in uh, regional wars, mainly in Syria, uh, has cost them dearly among their followers in Lebanon. This was uh, what the um, mass media that's controlled by Saudi Arabia and the Western media tried to portray over the years, over the past seven years of conflict. And they, they always tried to show how uh, there is a resistance to uh, Hezbollah and uh, their involvement in Syria. Uh, this vote can put an end to that. They've uh, the people who uh, uh, were loyalists to Hezbollah seem to be uh, more than ever. And uh, this uh, basically will put an end to that, uh, what was mainly a propaganda war to try to uh, uh, get at them. But this is, uh, but in, in fact, in terms of, um, uh, like I said, in terms of uh, legislation and whatnot, this does not change much. Yeah, and then finally, these parliamentary elections had originally been scheduled for 2013, and they were delayed. Uh, can you talk about why they were delayed and what do you think the significance uh, of the, this election will be for the Lebanese political system? Is there going to be more electoral regularity in the future? Well, I mean, uh, they delayed it because they didn't feel they need, they would be questioned. And uh, they were right. The political powers are still the same ones. They're still, you know, a slice uh, 
a slight change in uh, who has uh, what slice, but overall it's the same political players and um, they felt obliged right now to carry the elections just to maintain the act of having a state because uh, uh, by every other indication the Lebanese state is a failing state uh, in terms of infrastructure it's a uh, it's uh, in very bad shape in terms of um, uh, the, its financial situation is not great it's drowning in debt and uh, it's facing uh, difficulties coming in uh, uh, and paying off these debt so there's a major major challenges for the state uh, and uh, it, it and they need uh, any uh, cancellation of further elections would have uh, really questioned the whole uh, institutions uh, everything the legitimacy of every institution in the country well, unfortunately, we'll have to end it there. Thanks so much for joining us, Jamal. This is uh, a discussion of the elections that happened on May 6th in Lebanon. Thanks for joining us here in The Real News. Thank you, Ben. Reporting for The Real News, I'm Ben Norton.